inquiries. Okay, so we have adarusu thalithu. As I said, when you have a noun and its adjective, the adjective should match the noun in definiteness and indefiniteness. That is when the adjective and the noun has alif and lam, like we have here, the noun that is being described is adars, it has alif and lam. The adjective should also have alif and lam. If it didn't have, if it came darusun, the adjective, the, which is the number, a thalithu would also come thalithun. We would get darusun thalithun. So we see that it has doma here. It also has doma here. So the adjective should uh, match the noun it is describing. They should agree in definiteness and indefiniteness. They should agree in case ending vowel. I need basically case ending, the vowel at the end. They should also agree in gender. If it was something like al madrasa tu, you would have a thalitha tu. You would have it also coming as feminine. So adarthu thalisu, I need lesson three or the third lesson, the third lesson. This lesson basically is to teach us the difference between the definite noun and the indefinite noun. So we've already had a sign, seen what the definite article and the indefinite article is. When we say definite in Arabia, what we mean is, well, what it is in um, Arabic is ma'arifa, definite. When we say this word is definite, the man the word is ma'arifa. Or some would say mu'arrafa. Okay. And when the word is indefinite, what we say in Arabic is the word is the word is yeah. nakira. Um, Stamdia, if you can mute your microphone for us. So what so we have what we are doing today is about an nakira to the indefinite wal ma'arifatu and the definite. So I would want us to keep the Arabic vocabularies in our head instead of the English, which is the indefinite and the definite. And the sign of an indefinite word, the alamatu nakira, the sign of indefiniteness is the tanween that the word takes. Baytun, whether it is fatatain, kasratain, dommatain, it means that the word is indefinite. It is nakira. Bimana, we don't know it specifically. So if I say baytun, a house, a house is no specific house. If I'm speaking with you and I say baytun, a house, I don't know which house, or you don't know which house we are talking about. That is the indefinite article, which is the tanween. Now the definite article is the alif alam here. The moment we bring al, we take out the one domma, we take out the indefinite article, which is the second vowel at the end. We take out one domma and it comes al baytu, al baytu. So the al means the, the house. So now we know which house we are talking about. The moment I say the house, it means we have a specific house we are talking about. So that is basically what the lesson is about. We can see qalamun, tanween, al qalamu. It comes with one domma, and then the definite article is there. We have kitabun, a book, al kitabu, um, the book, jamalun, a camel, al jamalu, the camel. Okay. So in the Quran, we see something like as we saw in um, Surah Al Baqarah. Zalika al kitabu. Zalika al kitabu. Kitabu there is definite. Sorry. Al kitabu there is definite. And we have kitabun anzalnahu. Kitabun as indefinite, a book. So when you are speaking or you want to use a word, you should know which, in which case to put it. When it is definite, you need to bring the, which is the alif elam, you need to bring it. Okay, we have down here, al qalamu maksurun. Maksurun bimana broken. The pen is broken. Al qalamu 
maksurun. And so pieces of something, we call it kisra. Kisra, kef, sin, ra, tau marbota. So pieces of bread. When you have a bread, after eating the bread, you realize that there are pieces of it um, around and it's broken, the broken pieces. We call it kisratun min al khubzi. Kisratun min al khubzi. From this same kesara word, to break. Kesara, to break. This al qalamu maksurun. The pen is broken. Okay. It says al babu maftuhun. The door is opened. So we've already seen something about the nominal sentence in the lesson two file, where we discussed types of sentences. We realized that we spoke about nominal sentence. And when we say a nominal sentence, you have a now beginning the sentence like this, and then it comes with the second part of it is the predicate. Now, when you have a, a nominal sentence, the first part of the nominal sentence is the now that begins it. The now that begins a nominal sentence is called mubtada. It's called mubtada. M-U-B-T-A-D-A, -A, mubtada. Because we begin our sentence with it, we call it mubtada. And this other part of it, be it a now that comes or a verb that follows it, whatever that follows it, is called khabar. Khabar. Now, this khabar, if it is a now, it comes indefinite. So you'd have the now beginning the sentence as a definite now, yani mu'arrafa or ma'arifa. And then the khabar will come as nakiratun, nakiratun, and indefinite. So you have here al qalamu the pen maksurun is broken. That is how we make a nominal sentence. So you see al waladu jayidun al bintu jayidatun. The predicate comes as indefinite without the alif and lam, and then the mubtada comes as definite. Okay. So we have al babu maftuhun. The door is opened. Maftuhun also comes from Fataha. Maftuhun comes from Fataha. Just like we had Miftah. Miftah being the key coming from Fataha to open. Now, one thing that makes Arabic language very easy that we, we've not all realized is the science of morphology, what we call Ilmu Sarf. Now, in the morphology, you have a three root word. Then from the three radicals or the three roots, you form almost about 15 words from it. They are all related to the root. The meaning is related to the root. So let's say you see maftuhun. You don't know the meaning of maftuhun, but you can hear fataha in it. Fautaha, fataha, to open. If you see miftahun, you don't know the meaning of miftahun, but you see fataha in it. That is the root of it. You see fatihun. Fatihun has fataha in it. They all relate to open, open, open. Al-fatiha. So the radical becomes the fautaha, and then we keep creating words from it. Like kataba, katibun, maktab, kitab, kataba, mukataba. You keep creating words from the three radicals till you get whatever word you want. It's part of what makes the Arabic language easier if you know that particular science. Okay, so we have the al babu maftuhun, the door is open. It says, al waladu jalisun. In all this, cast your eyes to the fact that the mubtada is definite. Mubtada being al walad here and the khabar being jalisun here. Al waladu. Definite. Jalisun, indefinite. Wal mudarrisu, the boy is sitting. Jalisun is sitting. Wal mudarrisu, wakifun. And the teacher is standing. 
and the teacher is standing. Dial is on the plural of it is um, uh, Julus or Dial is on. We have it like that. Kunna Julus and in the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can come like that with Julus to mean the plural of people, a people sitting. Okay. It says, Al Kitabu Jadidun wal Kalamu Kadimun. In all this, as we are doing, you run your mind around sentences you would want to um, create other than this. And then inshallah, we create them together. Then we memorize them. We just keep them in our mind. Al Kitabu Jadidun. The book is new. Wal Kalamu Kadimun. And the pen is old. Jadidun, new. Qadimun, old. Uh, and it says, Al Himaru, the donkey, Al Himaru, Sagirun. Let me increase this a little bit. Okay. Al Himaru, Sagirun, the donkey is small, while Hisanu, Kabirun, and the horse is big. So, opposites, we have Jadid and Qadim. Sagir and Kabir. Okay. Al Kursi Yu Maksurun. The chair is broken. Al Mindilu Wasihun. Wasihun, this is a new word. Wasihun means dirty. Al Mindilu Wasihun. The handkerchief, the handkerchief or the towel or the tissue. I've said that the word Mindil goes for anything that we use in wiping cleaning and all that. So mindil, tissue, um, handkerchief, towel, wasihun is dirty. The opposite of um, nazif, nazif, clean. Um, we see it just here. Alma'u baridun. The water is cold. Alma'u baridun. The water is cold. Al Kamaru Jamilun. The moon is beautiful. Now, there is something also here we need to know. We realize that when we are searching for the month of um, the crescent of Ramadan, we don't normally say the moon. We normally give it the crescent. Yani the, 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 it's fresh state, that very semicircular. Um, pin, very small like that, like a bow without its arrow. Um, we call it in Loga Arabiya, Hilal, Hilal. Um, that is what the guy sings. I think Mahir Zain, Ya Nur al Hilal, Akbil Ta'al, O oh, you light of the crescent, Akbil Ta'al, come on, come on, come to us. Okay, so Al Qamar is the general name for the moon whether it's first stage, second stage, or third stage. It's called Al-Qamar. But when it is fresh, it is called Hilal. That is the time when it is very tiny. It's called Hilal. And then it's also called Al-Badr. Al-Badru, when it is full, when the moon is very full around the night of the 13th, 14th, 15th, we have a very full moon night. That is when we fast, the, we do the three days fasting of Ayam will be the, the white days. So that time the moon is called Kamar. Uh, it's called Al Badr. So we realize that when the uh, people of Medina were welcoming the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in their song they said, or uh, in their nasheed, they said, "Tala Al Badr alayna, Tala to appear, Al Badr, and they use Al Badr, yani the full moon." So if you look at the translation of that nasheed, you see the full moon has risen over us. And you wonder why, where did they get the full from? It is from the meaning of al-badru. If it was al-qamaru, they would say the moon has risen over us. For the tala al-badru alayna, the full moon has risen over us. Okay. So it says al-qamaru jamilun. Please, I'm sure you'll be noting things, whatever you didn't hear clearly, you you ask for clarification, inshallah. Then I would make sure to put all that in our notes. Al Qamaru Jamilun. The um, moon is beautiful. 
Al-baytu qaribun. The house is close. Wal-masjidu ba'idun. And the masjid is far. And as I've said, the masjid, we can call the masjid musalla, and then we can as well call it um, jame, and then also its original name, what you popularly know, masjid. Actually, when you go to some Arab, Arab lands, you hardly hear masjid. Um, places like Misr, they will mostly say jame, 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 which is the other name of the masjid. That is why I gave it, because Sometimes my step somewhere and this word masjid is not popular at all. Okay. We have al baytu qaribun wal masjidu ba'idun. The house is close and the masjid is far. Al hajaru thaqilun. The stone, al hajar, that is why we have al hajarul aswad, the black stone. Al hajaru thaqilun. The stone is heavy. When we say thakil, the man are heavy. Uh, we, uh, we have it in the Quran, if I could quickly remember. Uh, uh, we have some thakila right here close to us. Let me see. We have in a Surah al muzammil Aywa. Surah al muzammil verse number five. Inna sanulki alayka qawlan thakila. Thakila, heavy. Surely we will make to light upon you a weighty, a weighty word and a very heavy word. Al Hajaru Thakilun, the stone is heavy. Well, Waraku Khafifun, it didn't come well, but the word is Khafif. Kha, fa, yai, fa. Those who have the hard copy will have this appearing very clearly. The hard copy of the book one or all of it. Al-waraku is paper or papers. Can you say singular or plural? Al-waraku, papers or leaves. Leaves are also called the leaves of a tree. They are also called warak. So we can say paper or the leaf is light. Okay. Now we have al-labanu harun. The milk is hot. The milk is hot. Al Kamisu Nazifun. The shirt is neat, clean. Okay, so we have Nazif here being the opposite of Wasikun. And then we have Harun here being the opposite of Baridun. So at least they've given us a number of uh, opposites here. We have Jadidun Qadimun, Sagirun Kabirun. We have wasikhun um, nazifun, baridun harun, and then we have qaribun uh, and then ba'idun here. Okay, we have thakil and khafif also here. And also you can, well, well like thakil, you can say hadha thakilun alayya, hadha thakilun Alayya, yani something is heavy upon you, a duty, a responsibility, something to say, and it's heavy upon you to say. Say, Hada thakilun alayya. This is heavy upon me. You might want to say, This is heavy on my tongue. Yani, um, something like, uh, as you have something to say, but it's, it's, you can hardly say it because of maybe what it contains. So you can say, Hada thakilun ala lisani. Hada thakilun ala lisani. Lisani, my tongue. Lisan is the tongue, so you can say it like that. Okay. Okay, and then we come to um, Tamarin. In his tamarin, you realize that there is no vowels. But if you have the book, I'm sure there will be vowels there. But in the tamarin, he says, Ikra waktub ma'adabti awakhiril kalimat. Ikra, read, waktub, and write. Ma'adabti, pause vowelizing. When we say dubt, 
یعنی the word dubbed actually means uh, kind of to uh, put something out greatly to put something out greatly so what is saying that read and write ma adopti was vowelizing giving vowels to awahir al kalimat the endings of the words so here the words are vowelized all right but the endings do not have vowels so you have a word like masjid is vowelized up to this point and the dal has no vowel the masjid here no vowel the ending here no vowel so what they require from us is that we should be able to know what vowel to put there very very beautiful exercise what are they requesting us to put at use here you've already studied that if the word does not have alif and lam it is indefinite so you should give it the definite article here and the definite article you've learned is what tenween the double vowel or the nation sound so you say masjidun masjidun since it doesn't have alif and lam you give it tenween and then when you come here you see the alif and lam is there so you can't say al masjidun no the definite article and the indefinite article can never meet in a word Unfortunately, you have some imam leading salat and he mixes it up. He can bring the definite article in a word and bring the indefinite article in a word whilst reading the Quran. It's very, very serious crime. But unfortunately, who to hold the person to, um, uh, to justice? Al-Masjidu. Now we give it just one domma. Al-Masjidu. We come here, Al-Ma'u, because of Alif el -Lam. Now here, ma does not have alif and lam. So we say ma un, ma un. Okay, so that is what this assignment requires from us. We have al baytu, and then we have ba bun, qalamun, al qalamu. So you see where it does not have alif and lam, you give it just one. Where it does not have alif and lam, you give it the double vowel. Where it has alif and lam, you give it the um one domma you just give it one vowel okay so that is that for the first assignment and then he says okay all the words here are familiar words there are no new words inshallah but the second one number two here he says Ikra walk to read and write these are previous sentences so all the sentences we've seen them in the lesson and then he wants you to just read it aloud and please do it. Sometimes when I feel, oh, I heard Ustaz read it in class, it's fine. No, read it. Sentence that you already know, read it. Read it severally. It sticks on your tongue and it sticks on your mind. It makes it easier for you when you want to also reproduce it. So, Al Maktabu Maksurun. Al Maktabu Maksurun. You already seen it, but read it as you heard Ustaz read it. So you read al maktabu maksurun al mudarrisu jadidun. Read it with his vowel aloud. Read it to yourself. Repeat it. Al kamisu wasihun wasihun. The vowels are up there, so you use them there. Take advantage of them there to read it here without the vowels. Okay. Now before we get to the third sentence, let me take you back a little and show you something. Um, okay, right here. From here, I think we have time. Okay, picking from here, is that the first sentence? Okay, that's the first sentence. Okay, so let's pay attention to something here. Um, we have Al-Qalamu, Maksurun. And this is a meaningful sentence. We are we are merging our lessons with the lesson two file, the PDF that I gave you. That is the background of everything that we would understand in Arabic. Because that is that explains all kinds of sentences the Arabic language will produce for you. So you have a sentence like this: Al Qalamu Maksurun. Because this Al Qalamu is definite and maksurun is indefinite. That is why I'm able to say the pen is broken. That is what gives me that meaning. 
the pen is definite, okay? The one that comes is indefinite. And then that's the predicate. In a Mubtada and Habar case, or a subject and predicate case, how we give the meaning is this is that. So al qalamu the pen, maksurun, is broken. al babu the door, maftuhun, is open. Now, let's say I give the maksurun alif elam. The moment I give the maksur, the maksurun here, if I give it alif elam, what happens is that it becomes al qalamu al maksuru. Al qalamu al maksuru. Now, what happens here? If you remember clearly, we said that the adjective takes, if the noun takes alif al lam, and the one that follows it takes alif al lam, ends with the same vowel. Both of them are masculine, masculine, or feminine, feminine. Then the second one becomes adjective to the first one. So if I give it alif al lam here, now I've made them agree in definiteness. They agree in case ending, the vowel at the end. And they also agree in gender. In that case, it's no more a subject and predicate sentence again. It's no more a nominal sentence again. Now we've fallen into the adjectival phrase. Okay. So if I say al qalamu al maksuru, now al maksuru is an adjective. So the meaning wouldn't be the pen is the broken again. It will become the broken pen. Al qalamu al maksuru. I al qalamu al maksuru. The broken pen. Same way, al babu maftuhun. If I give al maftu alif al lam, and it becomes al babu al maftuhu or al babu al maftuhu. I've made al maftuh an adjective. So what happens is that it becomes the opened door. The opened door. Another incomplete sentence. Because you said the adjectival phrase is part of the incomplete sentences. And also, al waladu jalisun. Just give jalis alif elam, it becomes an adjective because you've made it look just like al waladu. If I say al waladu al jalisu, becomes the sitting boy. Al mudarrisu al waqifu, the standing teacher. So you see, before we can have the teacher is standing, the predicate should be indefinite. So that is why they are teaching us the definite article and the indefinite article. You should be able to know how to put them. If you see it in the Quran, you should be able to know how to give the meaning. Okay. So that happens throughout. If you say al kitabu al jadidu, if you say al kitabu al jadidu, you've done the same thing. It becomes the new book. Al qalamu al qadimu, it becomes the old pen. Okay. If the same way, if you take out the alif al lam instead and make the noun also indefinite, kitabun jadidun. It becomes the same thing, adjective and this um, noun, a noun and this adjective. Kitabun jadidun, a new book. Okay, so when we are making our nominal sentence, which is a complete sentence, we should know how to put the subject and how to put the predicate. Okay. Now we come to uh, this particular act. Tamreen, Tamreen exercise. If you see Tamreen, Tadrib, Tatbik, everywhere in any book, it means assignment, exercise, or practice. Okay. You have Imla, Imla, Dimana, feel, feel, F I L O, Al Farag, empty space, empty space. Imla Al Farag. Fill the empty spaces. Fima yeli in the following. Fima yeli in the following. Be what the by putting what the bimana putting comes from the verb what the ah to put. What the ah to put. We need to form sentences around this particular word. Let me save it for my end. Oh, what the ah. Okay. 
He says, بوضع الكلمات المناسبة من الكلمات التالية. He says, الكلمات المناسبة أو مناسبة فيو املا الفراغ فيو the empty spaces فيما يلي in the following بوضع by putting الكلمة المناسبة الكلمة المناسبة by putting the appropriate word من الكلمات التالية among the following words الكلمات التالية the following words and the words are جميل وسخ دتي مفتوح open حار hot ثقيل heavy خفيف light Okay, so you look at this words here, al-hajar, the stone, al-qamar, al-mindil, al-bab, al-waraq, al-laban, and you look at the what fits them. Please, if you can try your hands on this one for me, I'll be very glad. You can try your hands, write it on a paper, and give it a snap or something and share with us, inshallah, I'll be very, very glad. Okay. Al-farag, the word al-farag, we need to form sentences around it. Al-Farag means empty space, but it actually also means something like leisure. A time that you have nothing doing, it's called Farag. Uh, so we need to create some sentences around it, inshallah, in our vocabulary. Okay, here, same case, it says, Imla al-Farag, fill the empty spaces, fi mayali, in the following, be what the kalimatin munasabatin, by putting the appropriate word okay it says nazifun okay also so all these words we've seen them so you just put what is appropriate for them here you you are putting the appropriate word mubtada appropriate subject all these are predicates so they've left the first part of the sentences so you will put the subjects there which is the mubtada and then you the predicates have been fixed there for you a subject of predicate case is just like alhamdu lillahi. Alhamdu is the subject, lillahi becomes the predicate. Such is a subject and predicate. So in that case, when you are reading the subject, you cannot read it with any other vowel but dhamma. Alhamdu. So you see, you can you can say alhamdulillahi. But in kira'a, let me make this point clear. In recitation, when somebody reads Alhamdulillah, Alhamdi with Kasra, it is not Arabic per se, but a form of Kira'a. They have a science in there where the vowel of the first word is dropped to follow the vowel of the second word. Because Lillahi starts with Kasra, Lillahi, Alhamdulillah, to follow it. It's a kira science, but not Loga. In Loga, the Mubtada, should start with Dhamma. So you must say Alhamdulillah. Unless when you want to say Inna, Inna Alhamdulillah. When you bring Inna, like they do on Khutbah, member, at that point when you say Inna, it is a must for you to say Alhamdulillah. Inna Alhamdulillah. Now when the Imam says Inna Alhamdulillah, it is wrong, completely wrong. So it's supposed to be in alhamdulillah. Now, alhamdu is when it is the subject. It is starting the sentence. Okay. So here we put subjects. We should know that the subject should be definite and it should end with dhamma. Okay. Then it brings us to al kalmat al jadida. Inshallah, we would uh, fix meanings for all these. Al qamar jadidun qadimun. We've seen all these words. Uh, Yes, we've seen all these words, so nothing new in the Al Kalmat Al Jadida. Okay, so he brings us again in the same vein Najmun Esta. We've seen this word already Najmun Esta and Najmu the star. Rajulun indefinite, a Rajulu uh, definite. Dikun a cock, a Diku the cock. Talibun, a student, a talibu, the student. Okay. It says, it gives us more sentences here. An najmu ba'idun. The star is far. Ar-rajulu wa kifun. 
the man is standing. Again, just to reiterate about the adjective and uh, adjectival phrase, when you say anajimul ba'idu, anajimu al ba'idu, you mean the far star, the far star. You've not said a complete sentence. So it's anajimu ba'idu. Now you have a subject and predicate, a mubtada and khabar. So mubtada anajimu ending with is domma ba'idun, the predicate, which is the khabar without alif and lam, and it's also ending with the tanwin. Then we have a sukkeru, sugar, hulwun is sweet. Sugar is sweet, hulwun, sweet. The word for sweet, as in uh, toffees, is halawiyat. Halawiyat, from the same, from the same word hulwun. So we will need to also um, keep that. Inshallah, I'll provide all that halawiyat, sweets. When you go to the Arab land, they kill themselves with sweets always. Uh, it says, At-talibu maridun, the student is sick. Ad-diku jamilun, the cock is nice. It said jamilun can mean nice, can mean good, can mean beautiful. Sometimes used to look to mean handsome, but the word for handsome is wasimun, as we've seen in the vocabulary, I guess. Wasimun, handsome for a man. So he says, as a rajul wasim, this man is handsome. Okay. Adaftaru, or you say zawji, zawji wasimun, my husband is handsome. You can put it that way. He, the husband, would also say zawjati. Was you say Zaujati Jamilatun, and then you say Zauji Wasimun. Um, in the Quran, the word for husband and wife both came as Zauj, Zauj. No difference, no term or boot. So, the word for wife, we, we would say Zaujatun in Arabia, but uh, classically, the wife is Zauj, the husband is also Zauj. The word zawj means a pair, a pair of something. So we don't make masculine of it or feminine of it. Unless when in, in everyday language, we want to differentiate, then we do it that way. But in the Quran, the wife was mentioned as zawj, not zawjatun. You won't find that in the Quran. Okay. At daftaru, the notebook or the exercise book, jadidun is new. Atajiru Gani Yun, the trader is rich, is wealthy. Adukanu, Adukan is a shop. Dukanu, shop. Adukanu Maftu Hun, the shop is opened. Alwaladu Fakirun, the boy is poor. The boy is poor. Atufahu Ladizun. The apple, Atufah, the apple is sweet. And then we have number 11. Atabibu Tawilun. The doctor is tall. Wal Maridu Kasirun. And the patient, Al Marid, the sick person, Kasirun is short. Okay. Now, um, we have a whole lot of vocabularies also here. So, and what you do on your own, for your own good is, you need to merge lessons. You've learned min, to mean from. Like, uh, min al fasl. you've seen something like min al madrasa, from the school. So you can pick the min. Ana, min al dukan, I am from the shop. Ana, min al dukan, I am from the shop. You can ask, Hal Dukanu, Hal Adukanu, Maftuhun, is the shop opened? Hal Dukanu, Maftuhun, is the shop opened? You can ask, Hal Haza, Hulwun, is this sweet? Hal Haza, Hulwun, is this sweet? You ask questions like that. Hal Anta, are you 
Marid al Antamarid, are you sick? <coughs> so you go around the words that you blend, you put one here, you join them. The vocabularies and their meanings needs to be readily available in your head so that whenever you want to say something, you have just every part of what you want to say because right now, whatever you want to say will form in English in your head. That is how the, your cognitive system will operate. That is the language it is trained upon. So it will form the sentence originally in English and you would, inside there, you would have to translate it into Arabic. Now, when you are translating into Arabic, you need to have all the vocabularies. So you want to say, I am from the school. I am going to the shop. You need to have the I, I am, you need to have it. You need to have the going, you need to have the to and the shop. You need to have all that. So like this, you need to take your vocabulary very serious. To get Arabic language, definitely you must memorize words. You must definitely memorize the vocabularies and you must definitely become a companion of the Quran so that you will see a lot of things that we are saying here in the Quran. And that helps it stick more. Okay. So try and be creating your own sentences. Since I'm available, when you create it and you have doubts about what you've created, you don't hesitate to share it with me, inshallah. I have all the time to correct it for you, inshallah. It says, Ikra, waktub, ma'adopti, awakhir al kalimat. You see, we've seen this same sentence, this same instruction in the book. And we've said that Ikra means read, waktub means and read and, uh, and write. Ma adopti whilst vowelizing, awakhir is the endings, al kalimat. Awakhir is the plural of akhir. So awakhir al kalimat, the endings of the words. So you've already, you know the meaning of this instruction. So anywhere you meet it in the book, you already know what they are requesting of you. So the same way, al babu, at tajiru, al najmu, al kamaru, al diku. Al-ma'u, as So here he wants you to vowelize. Al-baytu, al-majidu, al-rajulu, as-sukkaru, wal-waraku, al-waraku, the leaves or papers, sheets of paper. Now there is a topic, inshallah, I would have to prepare around this one. We have something we call huruf al-shamsiyya wa huruf al-qamariyya. The Arabic alphabets are 28 letters. 14 of them are called moon letters. Huruf al qamariya moon letters. And 14 of them are huruf al shamsiya sun letters. Now, they aid us in reading a word when the word has alif al la. Look at the pronunciation of these first two words. Here I say al, al babu, al. Babu, I mentioned the A and the L, the L, the A and L both show. Let's look at here. I say, Atajiru, Atajiru. I give the Ta Shadda, and from the A, I jumped to the Ta. Atajiru. So I don't pronounce the Lam. That is the difference between the Huruf al Kamariya. So when you have after the Alif and Lam, a Harf Kamariya coming like Ba. It doesn't take shadda. So you pronounce al babu. The ba does not take shadda. But you have something like ta, which is part of the horof shamsiya. You say attajiru. Attajiru. You don't pronounce the L. So inshallah, I'll prepare a separate profile on this. And then we just look through. You just need to know the 14 that are the kamariya and know the 14 that are shamsiya. Fortunately, for those who are used to madrasa and all that, you don't even need this lesson. You automatically you when you see a word like this you automatically pronounce it that way so you wouldn't need it so much but you will need it because you might end up having to teach somebody when they say khairukum man ta'allama al-quran wa allama the best of you is the one who studies the quran and teaches it it's not like you just studying how to recite bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin and you also sit somebody down Start Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alham, and all of you do not understand. If you create a chain like this, then the Quran will gradually fade out. When you create a chain of people who are learning, do not understand, and teaching 
and do not understand what they are teaching, at the end of the day, we have the Quran itself fading away from us. But among the protection Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving to the Quran, we have indeed sent down the remembrance and we shall protect it. It's part of these things we are doing. We learning the meanings. What we are doing here, somebody once told me, why don't you do something about Quran, like teach the Quran or something? I said, what I'm teaching is the Quran. That is the core. You don't, if you don't have the meanings, what are you doing? You pray and you don't understand what are you doing. Okay, so we will do the Huruf Kamariya and Shamsiya separately, inshallah. So that is what he wants to see us do here. Whether we would give these ones the Shadda, though he says Awakhir al Kalimat, but it also counts here. So we say Al Babu, At Tajiru, An Najmu, Al Qamaru, Adiku, Al Ma'u. Asariru, al baytu, al masjidu, al rajulu, as sukkaru, al waraku. So the pronunciations differ due to the if it's a uh, harf kamari or harf kamariya or shams, uh, shamsiya. Okay, here again it says, Imla al farag, fi ma yali, bi wad kalimatin munasabatin. Fill the space with the, the following empty spaces with the appropriate vocabulary. So you find the subject, the mubtada. I will prefer you to keep the mubtada and khabar in your head instead of the subject and predicate. So you fill these spaces, inshallah. Okay. And here he says, ikhtar, ikhtar, choose. Ikhtar, choose. Kalimatan. Let's break this down. Al-qa'ima is a list. List to nasibu appropriate that is appropriate says ikhtar kalimatan choose a word min al qaima from list b ba choose choose a word from list ba to nasibu kalimata that is appropriate or matches with the word Alati fil qa'imati, the word that is in the list A or list Alif. So you have words in list, list A, list B. So you look at list B and you, you match it with the appropriate word. I think we would do this right here. We have at talibu, at dukanu, at tufahu, al ma'u, al hajaru, al qalamu. So they want us to match the khabar to its accurate, uh, appropriate mubtada. So Lazizun will go for um, Lazizun will go for Atufah, right? Maksurun will go for Al Qalam. Thaqil will go for Al Hajar. Maftuh is uh, Al Dukan, uh, and then. Marid will go for Atalibu, Atalibu Marid. Harun will go for the water, Al Ma'u. So that is what they expect us to do. I'm sure this is my book I'm writing in. Your book is still free. You can also do the match in your book later without the assistance of any of the tools here. Okay. So they want us to just match the appropriate. Um, habar, da, habar to his appropriate mubtada, inshallah. He comes again, al kalimatul jadida. So what they've taken us through as at till now is that um, they've shown us the definite and indefinite article. They've partly shown us the subject and predicate, though they didn't mention it directly about, they didn't say they are telling us what mubtada and habar is, but they've shown it to us. And the Mubtada and Khabar, as I said, it is what makes up a Jumla Ismiya, a nominal sentence. Please, that lesson to note. Don't take it lightly. Try to have everything in there right in your head. Like when I mention it, it comes into your face. When I say Jumla Ismiya, it just comes into your head what it is. Okay. So here he brings us to Kalimat Jadida. We have Hulwun. Sweet, 
married patient or sick. Say, Ana married, I am sick. Adukyanu, the shop. Gani yun, rich, tawilun, tall, fakirun, poor, kasirun, short, atufahu, apu. Ah, so amazingly, you see the book already has the al huruf al qamariya al huruf al shamsiya lesson here. So inshallah, I might have no need to even prepare it again. Okay. As at this juncture, we have like, uh, we have about 30 minutes more. If there is any question, please, you can feel free to allow your microphone and ask us at this point, inshallah. Please, if you have any question, inshallah, before we continue, we can do the al huruf al qamariya and shamsiya today, inshallah. It's not a large lesson, so we can do it. Please, you can as well type your question, but I prefer you would ask it, inshallah. If you have the good net, if you have a good network, <clears throat> you can ask it. <clears throat> Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Since I joined in late. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask the, the number eight. The number eight? The, let, the lesson three. The sentences after. Is it in this book or the file? The file I sent you? No, this book. The okay. lesson, lesson three. Okay. The list of sentences there on the first page. Okay. Uh huh. Number eight. Okay. 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 So <laughs> it's Al Hajaru Sakilun. Well, Waraku, I can't see the Hafifun. 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 Please, what does it mean? Hafif, man, a light. It's light in weight. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I've written it there for you, Hafifun. And please, it will be better if any, all of you get the hard copy of the book, inshallah. I'd be very glad so that you can write some meanings right inside the book. When you mention the word, you write the meaning in the book. PDF mostly have issues. Okay, please, the other colleagues, are we all fine? Should we continue? Okay, I think that will be a yes, let's continue. Uh, we have al huruf al qamariyatu wal huruf al shamsiyatu. It's been made very easy here for us. Okay, so as I said, the, the alphabets are 28 and 14 of them are Qamariya and 14 are Shamsiya. So when you look at your file, let me see if you can have all of them on the screen right at once. Uh, okay. I, I hope you can still see it clearly. Yes, we can. Okay. So I wanted us to see how it's perfectly halves. We have 14 here and then 14 here. So what is required of us, 
Uh, if you're already used to madrasa and recitation of the Quran with the tajweed and all that, you are used to it. But perhaps you do not know there is something like al huruf al qamariya wal huruf al shamsiya. Al qamariya from the word kamar, of course, al shamsiya from the word sun. And when we say al huruf al qamariya, they are those letters that come after alif and lam. They come after the definite article and they do not take shadda. When they come after the alif and lam, the definite article, they don't take a shadda. And in that case, the alif and lam is read fully. It's read al. So you see al abu, al ibn, al. Uh, if you if you want al al adab, al adab, yani manners or literature. If it has alif is part of the, the hamza is part of the huruf al qamariya. And so we don't give a shadda. You say your alif and lam in full. We come to ba, you see al babu, al jannatu. And al jannatu can mean garden, basically. Al himaru, the donkey. Al khubzu, the bread. Um, coming. And then we have al ainu. Al hubs is bread, as we've said. Al ainu, the eye. And the word ain can mean a source of water, not just the eye. When we say ain, yani we say ainul ma. Ainul ma, yani the source of water. If you have a, something like a pipe, or in the mountains where the water sprouts from, where the water springs from, is called the ainul ma. The eye of the water. So somebody can ask that Hal Hunaka Ainun Huna, you are in a bush stranded or something, then somebody will ask Hal Hunaka Ainun Huna, Hal Najid Ainun Huna, Hal Najid Ainun Huna, will you get a, a source of water here? So Ain can have that meaning. Ain can also have the meaning of a spy. Like you can say, Hunaka Ainun Bainana. <coughs> Munaka Ainun Bainana. There is an eye, the manner there is a spy amongst us. You say, Arsaltu Ainan Hunak. Arsaltu Ainan Hunak. I sent a spy there. Mostly is that that is done by the kings, the presidents, and all that. Whenever there is a program that they find sensitive, they send an eye there. And that is a spy. So Ain can come with all these meanings when you are reading any of the religious texts. He says, Ghain says, Al Ghada. Al Ghada, Afwan, Al Ghada. Al Ghada is lunch or just food. Al Ghada is lunch or just meal. Okay. And then he says, Al Famu, Al Famu, the mouth. We have Al Kamaru the moon, al-kalbu, the dog, where the woman wanted to say al-kalbu and she rushed to go and say al-kalbu, anta kalbu, very dangerous. Al-ma'u, the water, al-waladu, the boy, al-hawa'u, al-hawa is the wind or the air, the air. Now we have al-yadu, the hand, the hand. It says, that is the al qamariya that is just the basic concept when you have a harf qamari coming after alif and lam what happens is that the letter is just giving a single vowel not no shadda and the alif and lam is read fully so we can't say al ab it can't even pronounce can't say abab you can not pronounce you don't do that okay now we come to the shamsiya al huruf shamsiya they are those huruf when Alif and Lam precedes them. When they are tied to Alif and Lam, they are pronounced with a shadda. And when pronounced with a shadda, the Lam vanishes. So from the A, we jump to the letter. So we have Ta as the first one. We say At-Tajiru, at the trader. at At-Thawbu, the dress. Some call it Tawb. Even I think even in English, they call it Tawb. 
a thobu dress adiku adiku you realize that all this you are not pronouncing the lamb the cock adhabu gold g o l d adhabu a rajulu the man azharatu the flower or rose flower rose or the flower asamaku the fish ashamsu the sun itself asaduru the chest asaduru the chest adaifu the guest guest or a visitor atalibu the student azharu azharu let's 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 um uh, stand on this word azharu with fata on the za means the back the back of something then your back is your zahar so somebody you say zahri yu'limuni my back is paining me zahri yu'limuni my back is paining me now you can say alamul zahar ash'uru bi alamun bi alamin ash'uru bi alamin fi zahri i i feel pains in my back now when the zwa takes dhamma as zuhru it becomes that afternoon time around day 11:45 to 12:30 that period as zuhru when it takes dhamma it becomes as zuhru which is the that time for the prayer the time itself is called as zuhru and the prayer is called salatu zuhru now there is something you should note here we call it zuhur salatu zuhru because that is the sun, the time the sun has reached its zenith and is crossing. That is the time the sun is very apparent. And what do we call appearing? Zohara. We say Zohara, the manner it has appeared. Zohara, it has appeared. So when the, the sun is a Zohara to Shamsu, when the sun appears like that on at its zenith, the highest point, Nusalli Salata Zuhuri. We play, we do, we pray the, we say the prayer of zuhur so azur from zuhur appearance azharu is the back let's do well not to mix the vowels inshallah and then we have the lamb it says allahmu allahmu is meat meat allahmu nun and najmu uh, the star okay so basically the ashamsia and the uh, al-qamariya that is what they guide us to do so when you are reading and you see al alhamdul in qira'a you can say alhamdulillah you can do that you have to bring the alif and lam alhamdulillah it has to show when you say al kitab it has to show you can say akitab al kitab when you want to say washamsi you say washamsi you jump on the sheen ashamsi so that is how these ones guys has to do al huruf al qamariya wal huruf al shamsiya what is upon you is to get familiar with it you don't really necessarily you don't have to necessarily memorize it if you're already familiar with reading you don't have to necessarily memorize it okay tamrin tamrin in that regards well, let me save this zahari zuhur the tamrin here is also to guide us to get that more clearly it says ikra al kalimat read the words al atiya the following words read the following words al kalimat al atiya read the following words now when you have the hard copy what will happen is that though you are watching it here but on the word like al atiya you write on top of it the following you already know al kalimat ikra al kalimat al atiya waktubha and write it waktubha and write it this word here muraiyan you all remember the hadith kullukum ra'in kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi kullukum ra'in all of you are caretakers and all of you are shepherds all of you are caretakers 
wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi and all of you would be asked about what you are given to take care of now the same word here mura'iyan yani waktubha and write it mura'iyan i was taken care of was being careful of okay he says iqra al kalimat al atiya wa aktubha read the following words and write it mura'iyan was given attention to was being careful about qawaid the laws qawaid is the laws or the qaida is singular the is singular is qaida the plural is qawaid laws mura'iyan qawaida nutqin نطق الحروف القمرية والشمسية نطق pronunciation was being taking or being careful about the laws of pronouncing الحروف القمرية the moon letters والشمسية and the sun letters so that is what this assignment requires for, from us اقرأ الكلمات الآتية واكتبها مرائيا قوائد نطق الحروف القمرية والشمسية so they want to us to practice on what we've learned about the Kamariya and Shamsiya. Okay. So we have, he wants you to pronounce it or you vowelize it. So even after we do this on your own, you can as well, all this portion, write them with the necessary vowels where the Shadda is supposed to be, you put it appropriately and we can check it for you, inshallah, if you want it to be checked. And I prefer you would want it to be checked. Okay, we have al -baytu. so no shadda on the back. Adiku, shadda on the dal. al mudarrisu um, no shadda on the meme. The meme is in the corner here. al babu no shadda on the back. Abtalibu, al sukkaru al daftaru So you pronounce it and you know where to put the vowel. Now there are some vocabularies here. al akh brother. al ukht sister. al rasulu the messenger, the messenger. A Rasul is called a Rasul because he carries a Risala. Risala, I Ursila, he has been sent. A Rasalahullahu ila al-alam, he has been sent to the world, so he's called Rasul. Al-Wajhu, the face. Al-Wajhu, the face. As-Sadiqu, friend. Al-Quranu, the Quran. As-Salatu, prayer or dua. Al Kaaba, our own Kaaba in Mecca. Awal bait wudi al nas, the first house placed on earth. Al Rasu, the head. Ras, the head. So the head of the family, you can say Rasul Usra. It's literally the head we are carrying on our bodies. Al Ras is the head we are carrying on our body, but it is sometimes used as Ra'is. You know the word Ra'is which we saw the president is from the word ra'asa. So even the word ras, which means the head we are carrying on our body, we can use it for the head of the family. You can say ra'asul usra, he's the head of the family. Who ra'asul bayt, haza ra'asul usra, this is the head of the family, you can put it that way. Then we have al-isba. Al-isba is finger, al-isba'u, finger. One finger like this is plural, is Al asabiu, al asabiu. Okay. Uh, in the in Surah Al Baqarah, we have this word there. If I could quickly learn the verse, I would want us to have the Quranic words very familiar whenever we meet it. Asabiahum uh, in Surah Al Baqarah. Let me find the verse. Okay. In Surah Al-Baqarah verse number 19, you find the word there and you see the meaning in the translation fingers. Is the fingers, the prayer of Al-Isba, which is finger, singular. as is soap. as soap. Azufri also comes with the meaning of finger. Azufri, but I think it's mostly used for animals instead. But it also comes with the meaning of the finger. Yani the, 
nails, sorry, nails. Not the finger as a whole, but the nail. Okay. And then we have uh, Al Fajru. So Az Zufri comes with the meaning of the nail, and then it comes with the meaning of a nasr, success or victory. Like Izaja and Nasrullah, that Nasr, it's, this comes as a synonym for it, as Zuf. It comes also as the nail, N A I L, human nails. His plural is Azafir, nails, Azafir. Okay. Al Fajru is the dawn time, dawn. Al Zuhru is the prayer time. Al Asr, the evening time around three there about. Al Maghrib, is the sunset, Al Maghrib, sunset, Al Isha'i, that is the um, prayer time after when it's fully dark, when the sky is fully dark. So, what is required of us is to vowelize these words and know where to accurately put the um, shadda and how to read it, inshallah. Okay, please, if there are any questions again, we have about 10 minutes. Please, our questions, as I've said, as I've said, um, we are focused on speaking Arabic. So I've asked that, get questions like, um, I want to say this, I, can't, I don't know this particular word. I want to, and what you do is that you have a little brother, you have some of you have daughters um, or children, sons, the little you are learning, speak it with a child. So you want to tell the child, stop. You say, kif, something like that. Kif, you, you, you let the child, his cognitive system start getting used to the words, the sounds of the Arabic. Do it that way. It's really helpful. You learn a lot yourself and the child also grows up knowing things becoming familiar for the person. You have a little brother, do it with them. Try something like that. You have a sister or a friend. Now, when there is something you can't say, we are, this is a very short course. So you take advantage to learn as much. Make your vocabulary book full. That is why I was saying you should bombard me with questions. How do I say that? How do I say this? You put all together in your vocabulary book, your notebook, vocabularies and expressions, such that whenever you want to say something, you can go at it right away and say it. So our questions are not strictly by the course, what we are doing here. Our questions are just anything Arabic. As I've said, I want to serve as a reference to, your, to Arabic, not just a Saturday and Sunday class. So even in the days of the week, when you have anything to ask, you feel free and ask if so far as it's Arabic, so that we clarify it, so that we can quickly speak faster. We can speak something faster. And for sure, speaking is very easy. As I've said, you need to work um, yourself into it. When you relax, it will not come to you. When you push trying to speak something, if you have a question right now, you say, uh, you know, please, or Allah samat. In the su'al, Lord Samat, in the su'al, you know this, but you choose to say, please, I have a question. When will you speak Arabic? You get it. So you use it. You can start with Lord Samat, in the su'al, and then from there, your question is in English. You use what you know. Lord Samat, in the su'al, ma ma'ana, what is the meaning of? Lord Samat, in the su'al, mal farq bayna, what is the difference between? You know, so let's try and be getting questions. We need a lot of questions. Okay. So please, if there is any question at all, um, anything at all you'd want to ask pertaining to a verse in the Quran, a hadith you've heard, a lesson we are doing, anything Arabic at all, please feel free to ask, inshallah, within the short time that we have left. Anyone?
Anyone with a question, please? Okay, apparently there is no question, right? Um, and in the absence of any question, we would we would want to close, inshallah. Inshallah, since we are still available, if there is any question anytime, inshallah, we can go ahead and, and ask. But as I'm saying, <clears throat> it's a very short course. And I actually made this just ladies only so that you feel you feel the freest you can feel. You feel the freest you can feel to ask whatever question you want to ask. Um, I just want, as I've said, since I started teaching, it's been guys, 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 guys. I don't know. Maybe the ladies do not feel comfortable. They don't. So I decided to make this just ladies to so that you feel the most comfortable as you can feel in your own space and do what you want to um, do. Feel free in also mastering something. So please, let's do well and be getting a lot of questions. If you read the material, anything you don't understand, please do well to come back with your questions, inshallah. Um, in any case, uh, we would end this session here. And in the evening, we would have a repetition of this session, inshallah. Though it's not the same because I can't completely say what I've said here there and also <laughs> okay okay I, how do you say cardboard in arabic you can say low yeah you can say low low yani l l lam wow ha low Okay, so inshallah in the evening, there will be a repetition of it, of this lesson. And whoever wants to join can as well join there. And then, okay, television, you can say television, as they say it, television, they use it. They have television and they also say arai, arai. I've seen the word arai used by Tontawi in one of his articles. Um, Memories, not memoirs. It's, it's written an article like that he used the word arai, but Arabs don't normally use arai. If you use arai, a lot will hardly understand you. So you use television. Oh, telfaz. Television, telfaz, arai. But telfaz is more popular. If you look in the Arabic book, you see ushahidu telfaz. I'm watching television. Okay. So Tilfaz is more popularly understood, so it's better you go with the Tilfaz. Okay. Okay, if you are done with the questions, inshallah, we are uh, closing. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thanks for your questions too. Okay, then inshallah. Um, Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'ana bima alimtana. وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين آمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته